Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Here we go, live from Oxford, England today. And I'm so glad that we are here in the nations. We are able to open a new work here in England later in the week. But enjoy these thoughts that I share with you today as we are here in one of the most iconic places on the earth. And yet we're simply moving in the ordinary with God. Be overwhelmed by him, my friends, and his goodness, even as we face the daunting unknown of all these things. Love you all. We'll talk soon. Here we go. I am sitting in my flat in Oxford, England, and when and I arrived in London uh, just a few days ago, caught the bus, rode into Oxford, and uh, are here in our flat. And, you know, it's been rainy, but come on, isn't that traditional England? <laughs> right? And so we've been walking somewhat in the cold and in the rain. Uh, but that doesn't make it uh, any less enjoyable uh, because oftentimes when you go to iconic places like Oxford University and you're in the town or the city of Oxford and you are attempting to absorb such history, my friends, that sometimes it is very, very difficult because you're watching people who live here every day and they're walking around like it's no big deal and you're there going, I'm trying to absorb history, right? I'm trying to absorb the reality of within just a few short hours, God can get you anywhere he wants you to be and that you can go from Sealy, Texas to Oxford, England in just no time. And you realize, well, regular people live here, things are happening, people are shopping, people are going to school, doing their everyday life, and there you are attempting to absorb the historical reality. And you don't want to have just a romantic um, view of it. You want to, as quickly as possible, you want to sink into the reality of why it is that God brought you here. You want to take it in. You don't want to waste any time. And yet, you're eating, you're drinking, you're visiting, making new friends. Uh, you're shopping for things that maybe you forgot to bring on the trip. So in the midst of all this historical iconic, right, you're also like, oh, I forgot the Claritin. <laughs> and I don't want my allergies to kick up. So we need to stop by the market and get some Claritin. Do you see what I'm saying? So sometimes being able to absorb the reality of where you are and what has taken place in the very places that you're standing, the very halls that you're walking through, the very gardens that you're looking at, the posh lawns that you're seeing, and you're realizing, think about all that has happened and then Holy Spirit says, now think about what's happening at this moment and think about what I'm about to do. So can you see the daunting uh, and overwhelming sense that you can have? And so this is a part of what I want to simply share with you today, that when you are in overwhelming and great circumstances, not just overwhelmed by negative but overwhelmed with the enormity of what God is doing and what he's saying. And could it really be that we are a part of that? Well, yes, my friends, of course we are. And to let him make all things real inside of you, I can't do enough naturally to cause myself to be able to absorb that. I have to allow Holy Spirit to make real in me where I'm actually at, why I'm here. Why is it that when McCrady and I have had the privilege of being able to come here at just this time, uh, just these moments to connect with certain people, and I just got off the phone with a dear, dear friend uh, who lives a short ways here from uh, Oxford, and we had hoped to see them in person today, but it just did not happen. 
as oftentimes will be the case when you're on limited time and you're attempting to fit into the schedule of people that you're visiting and and all of that. But we had such a rich conversation about what's happening under the radar within this very nation of England. You see, when, when Nancy McCready Ministries was was being birthed, um, I really wanted to name it Disciples of the Nations, Disciples of the dot, D-O-T, dot nations, because this is where my heart is at, Disciples of nations, of entire nations that God is moving in, where he himself is about to reveal his heart, what he longs for, and he's preparing very much under the radar sons who will move with him. You know, that's not the end. That's the means. He's getting his sons ready for what he's about to do, and only he can. And we don't know exactly what all of that looks like. We can see many components. And when you become overwhelmed in the daunting unknown, the daunting unknown... You have to make a decision to say, you know what, Lord, I'm so glad that you have owned me, that you've taken me in as your own, and that for every person they have a part of what it is he's doing. And then you just have to say, Father, simply prepare me for my slice of of what you're doing, my portion of the victory of Jesus that I'm here to gather up to be a part of. What might that be? And rather than whipping up scenarios in our own minds and trying to decide what it is and then set out to accomplish it and make things happen, the daunting unknown can only become known with every step of obedience and responsiveness to him and the simplicity of our day. So though I'm standing in an iconic place, having forgotten my Claritin, don't you love the eternal and the temporal when they crash, when they meet? And you realize, how how will all this be carried out? Did all the people in history that we're in such awe of, did they realize in the moments of their life, right, that they were making history? Or were they simply living out their ordinary life? Mm -hmm. I would say that for most, most were not trying to be iconic. They were living out their lives, whether they were a polymath, (laughs) which is a new word for me that I've just learned since being here, or they were, quote, the ordinary person on the street, right? Because before God, right, we are to him, and and he is the magnificent one who is sharing the manifold wisdom that is his, the, that he's the core and the source of life, and he's apportioned certain things to certain ones, and can we be okay with our portion, Because if he is becoming the center of everything, my friends, you'll be glad for any portion of what he's doing that's yours. Only when you don't know your value and significance in him and to him, who you are to him, that's when you keep clamoring for some kind of significance. And self just can't bear to be ordinary. Self can't bear that, is that all there is? You know, because... Until God makes it true inside of us, honestly, my friends, God's not enough. I mean, self, because it's its own God, never places a value on God himself. God will never be enough. No, it's what God would make me, (laughs) right? My life. And I'm just being struck again and again and again by how much self competes with God. But there's such a deep settling that comes within and the daunting unknown. When like Jesus, when you're stepping into the unknown, you step into the known person of your Father. And there is a deep settling that comes within you. Wave after wave after wave right in the midst of all the iconic, the historical, the the blood of martyrs, the 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 magnificence of what man has been able to do, looking at cathedrals, standing in places that are known literally 
all over the world where places here that have produced prime ministers, global business people, you know, it's it's staggering. But then you say, wait just a minute. <laughs> I am a son to the God <laughs> who has created all. I belong to him. Is he the great one to me? Is he life to me? Right When you're on location in places that can ping you and stimulate you and, and overwhelm you, my friends, I pray that I, that you, that we will be continuously overwhelmed by him. And then you'll be willing to be the smallest speck on the earth, the most insignificant to others. Because your significance becomes him, who you are to him. And Father, what is it that you would desire? That you place a value upon whatever it is that he's wanting, what he is asking of you. And you won't romanticize it, fantasize it. You don't have to make it bigger than it is or smaller than it is. You don't have to make sure that everybody knows. You don't have to be impulsively uh, ambitious and making it happen. You are content deep within, only with him. My friends, you can't produce that. You can't make that happen. He is unfolding that within your own development because that is how Christ lived. And isn't that what we are after, to live as Christ? Well, how did Christ live? Unto the Father. The Father was enough for Jesus. Is he enough for you? No matter where you're standing to get today, whether you're standing in what you would consider the most ordinary spot uh, at your you know, kitchen sink looking out your window, uh, or whether you're standing you know, in Oxford, England, wherever you are today, be overwhelmed by him. This is our honor. He is our calling. Let every gifting and every assignment bow to him. And yet, then let us fulfill his great commission. Let's make disciples of nations. I'm honored today that Wynne and I are getting to stand right here in Oxford, England, getting ready tomorrow in real time. That would be... Uh, Tuesday, (laughs) I think March 12th. Uh, Tomorrow we will travel down to the very southern tip of England, to Portsmouth, and on Thursday night we'll open up the first cross encounter in England. And we will see, is this a new work that God is opening? I want to encourage you that if you want to sow into Nancy McCready Ministries, Uh, very specifically for uh, the underwriting that we are doing for these new works in March. It is in England. In April, it will be in Paraguay. And I would want to uh, encourage you to give special offerings uh, to help us in the underwriting of the works that uh, we're opening up. In these days for Disciples of the Nations, which is uh, an arm of Nancy McCready Ministries, where we go into nations and we are opening up new works. Uh, So I just wanted to share that. But my friends, this is our time in the earth. So wherever you are today, whatever is happening, I pray that you would look unto him. And that you would be overwhelmed by his goodness. I certainly know I am. So here we go. We're going to keep walking. And the supernatural and the natural collide. Where the iconic and the everyday collide. My friends. Here we go. I love you all. Thank you for listening today. Before we go, I have one final ask and a bit of info. If you like our content, hit the share button to tell someone about it and subscribe at nancymccready.com 
forward slash podcast so you don't miss another episode. Also, I don't know if you've heard, but Google Podcasts are going away in April. So if you listen on Google Podcast, jump over now and make sure you subscribe to Tent Talk Podcast on my YouTube channel. All of our podcasts are listener supported and your gifts at nancymccready.com are greatly appreciated. Until next time.